So I'm at Home Depot. I'm in the parking lot and I'm about to go inside the store. I'm gonna try not to get distracted, which is very hard for me to do at Home Depot because I love this place. I mean, it's like Disneyland to me. Sometimes I just find something that's so cool I gotta figure out something to use it for. Quite often at Home Depot, I buy things and I end up using them for a purpose that is not the purpose for which they were intended because they're just really cool looking and I can turn them into something else. I look at them and I think that would make a great candelabra or necklace or bong. I mean, I don't smoke, but you know what I'm saying. I really shouldn't even be giving Home Depot my business because I applied to be in their affiliate program and they turned me down. I'm passionate about Home Depot and they turned me down. That would be like Disneyland being adults only. Sorry kids, no kids allowed. That's something about you need more subscribers, you need more videos, whatever. But I'm here and I'll probably always be here, even though the love seems to be unrequited. Today I'm here with a really specific mission in mind. I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted already and I'm only in the parking lot. So what is my specific mission? I was in the bus, just minding my own business. I had the windows down and all of a sudden, in flies this bumblebee, you know, just flying around like they do. Like, you know, you're ducking your head and they're flying around like they're just trying to catch you and all that. And here's the thing, I like insects. I am a more insect friendly person than probably most people and certainly more than most females, okay? Because I love you girls, but you're kind of when it comes to the bugs. A lot of guys are pussies about bugs too, to be fair, but generally speaking, I'm an insect person. I used to have catalogs of all the different types of spiders that lived in my store. I had a jumper spider that used to come down from the ceiling and just land on my computer and hang out sometimes. Jumper spiders really like people, I don't know if you know that. But when it comes to bees, I admire them. I think they're very cool. I'm sorry that they're going extinct and all that. I personally have not had great experiences with bees. Once when I was a kid, I took the tarp off of this sandbox and all these bees came flying out like a whole hive full and they all landed on my arm and stung me one by one by one. They were hanging, you know, when they sting you, they die. So their bodies are just hanging there and it looks like I'm wearing like a puffy yellow and black jacket on just one arm. My mother had to take all those damn bees off of me and then get a tweezers and pull every single little stinger out. And then I had to wear my arm in a sling for like a week. So I try to keep sort of a wide berth when it comes to bees. So I gotta figure out a way that I can have my windows open and still keep the bees out. Window screens, right? That's always the answer. At first I thought I'd just buy those slider ones that you get at Home Depot, you know, that they fit in the top part of a window and they're cheap, they're like five or six bucks. However, they don't fit. They're just slightly too tall to fit in the top part of the window. So I think I'm gonna have to make my own. And that's what I'm here for, to get my window screen making supplies. I'm just gonna have to try really hard not to get distracted in there because there's always so many cool things to look at at Home Depot. Gotta get in, get my window screen, get out. Just like the flowers to the springtime, I'll come back to you. Just like the colors to the daylight, I'll come back to you. You're my own. Nothing in the cart yet. The cart's sticking in the No matter where I'm going, I feel better just know. Stop looking at my boobs. I'll come back to you. Weirdo with a selfie stick on aisle six. What did I tell you? Candelabra or bong? I stayed pretty focused. I bought two things at Home Depot for this project. I bought the roll of screen and I also bought this roll of magnetic tape. That's gonna go around the edges of our screen. So besides those two things, I'm gonna need a roll of duct tape, a pair of scissors, a box cutter, and a great big box. What do I need the box for? Stick around and see. 
So the first thing we're gonna do is measure the window. I just take a tape measure and measure it off. We wanna measure the part that we want to cover, not the whole window, because the way these windows work, only the top part opens, and we need to get an accurate measurement of the part that the screen is actually gonna cover. My window measures 28 inches long by 10 inches tall. 10 inches, oh my God, it's a miracle. The great big box I mentioned, yeah, we're gonna use that to make a cardboard template and guess how wide it is, 10 inches. You know what that means, right? I mean, this can't be a coincidence. God really wants me to have this window screen. So I've got the template. It fits perfectly into the window, thanks to God. I feel so shined upon. Now we're gonna take the template, we're gonna lay it out on the countertop, and we're gonna get a piece of screen. We'll cut a piece of screen that's roughly five, six inches bigger than what we need. I'm gonna tape both the template and the screen to the countertop. Don't tape the screen to the template. It might seem like that's the right thing to do, but don't do it. Tape the template to the tabletop and tape the screen to the tabletop too, because you need to be able to get the scissors in there to cut the screen. And if it's taped on there, it's gonna be pretty much impossible. Now we're gonna cut the screen. We don't have to worry about being super precise because we are gonna put an edge on this. So we want to cut around the template, not tight to the template. Now the tape at the top of the screen is allowing me to pull tightly on this outer part of the screen that's not taped down to make my cut. Now in our case, we don't actually have to cut the other side because it's pretty much, we're just gonna go with this the size it is. We interrupt this project for a totally off topic rant. Okay, I'm gonna address the elephant in the room right now. I know you're looking at me and you're thinking, she's got a big old zit on her chin, and yep, I got a big old zit on my chin. What you gonna do about it? You've probably been thinking, why is she shooting a YouTube video with a big old zit on her chin? Well, YouTube waits for no one. You have an episode due on Friday, you gotta shoot, even if you got a big zit on your chin, and so what, I got a big zit on my chin, I bet you got one somewhere. Probably in a less attractive place than your chin, too. We now return you to your project in progress. The next step is going to be the tape. You probably have some nice, normal, maybe two-inch gray or black duct tape. Not me. This is what I have. It's blue. It's way too fat. But I didn't pick any up at Home Depot because I knew I had some tape. Just didn't really think about what kind of tape it was. I got this at Job Lots, so it was super cheap, and that's how I like things, super cheap. But now I've got to use this big, fat blue tape on the edge of my screen. It's either that or don't make the screen, so I'm going to go ahead with my big, fat blue tape. So I'm using the big, fat blue tape to tape the edges of the screen. What you want to do is put the tape sticky side up on the countertop, take the edge that you're trying to cover, and place it onto the sticky tape. Position it so that you've got about an inch there and then fold it over. You're not going to have to work so hard at this as I will because I got the big fat tape. If you're using normal tape, you can just fold the piece over and that's it. But I'm going to have to cut mine. So I'm using my box cutter to score it. And you have to be really careful when you do that because you want to make sure you don't cut the screen too. So I'm cutting off the excess and yeah, it's not perfectly even, but that's what I get for using big blue tape. Okay, next step, we're gonna attach the magnet tape to the edges. Once we put the magnet tape on, we can actually test it out, stick it over the window and see how it's doing. Okay, two issues, maybe three, maybe four. First issue, most significant issue, that black part of the metal, yeah, this is what you call research because that part's not magnetic and I just assumed because it was metal that it was going to be magnetic which is not a fair assumption because there's lots of metal that's not magnetic including aluminum which is probably what it's made of so I could use velcro I'm not a big fan of velcro because it gets dirty quick I use it for some things but for something like this it's going to get pretty dirty and plus you need two pieces you need one on the window and one on the screen itself which is an ideal. What I think the ideal solution is, is for me to glue a piece of thin metal, which I do have some thin metal pieces that are magnetic, to glue a piece onto the edge of the window and then just do things the normal way with the magnet and it'll stick because that piece of metal will be there. 
unfortunately, I can't lay my hands on that metal right now. So I think for now, temporarily, I'm going to do the Velcro solution, knowing that I'm probably going to change it out later. Okay, so that was problem number one. Problem number two, this magnetic tape is lame. It gives some stick. I mean, it'll seal it to some extent, but it's not good enough to hold the screen up there. I mean, a really hardy bumblebee could just push right through that thing. So I'm going to let my domino magnets save the day once again, and I'm going to put one of these in each corner of the screen. So that was problem number two. What's problem? Oh, problem number three. It's not quite wide enough. And that's because every window is going to be different in terms of what's around the window. You know, there each one has different things, kind of brackets or whatever, hanging around it. And because of the way the brackets are set up, I need a little bit more length. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extend it using tape. That's the easy part. You know, just take another piece of tape and bring it out a little further to the side. Problem solved. And the last issue is that on the top part of the window, where the magnet should go smoothly across the top, I've got a wooden bracket that's holding up the piece that's right above it. So I've got to cut a notch for that bracket. Again, not the end of the world. Pretty easy solve. Like I said, every window is going to be a little bit different. So you're going to have to do a little bit of customization every time you make one. And they're probably going to only go to their specific window. That's because school buses are funky. We like them funky. Then we hate them because they're too funky. It's kind of like life. Funky? Not funky. What do you want? I'm going with funky. So, here it is. There's the screen. I got myself a screen. Bees be gone. Is it perfect? No. Kind of funky looking. It's a first attempt. I never did this before. I've got three more to do, so I bet the last one's going to be amazing. Now, I am a recovering perfectionist, and in the old days, I would have stopped about five times during this project. I would have stopped when I didn't have the right tape. I would have stopped when the screen started unraveling around the edges. I would have stopped when I didn't have enough hot glue. I would have stopped when I figured out that that metal wasn't magnetic. There's so many reasons to stop. If my goal for this window screen was perfection, I'd have bees all up in this shit. Oh, I should mention that Sunday night we're premiering our new series, driver's seat unboxing, which is just a silly little thing, but you might find it entertaining. And I don't know why I insist on saying we when it really is just me. I hope you got something out of the little screen project. Now go make one yourself. It ain't rocket science.